Nancy Drew. Since you can tell a lot about a person by where he or she lives, I thought I'd introduce myself by showing you my room. As you can see, I keep it pretty neat. Of course, I don't spend that much time in here. I always seem to be off solving mysteries. Anyway, here's my center of operations, my desk. Go ahead and poke around. If you want to know the particulars of how I do what I do, take a look at the book titled How to Be a Detective. It's real helpful, especially if you're new to the mystery solving business. And be sure to check out my scrapbook. I put memorabilia from all my past cases in there. A lot of them were pretty dangerous and at times really scary. But don't say anything about that to my dad, okay? He worries about me enough as it is. And whatever you do, read what's in the file called Case File. That will tell you all about the mystery I'm about to try to solve. If you think you're ready to dive into that mystery, just click on the plane ticket and you'll be on your way. Preparation for our landing. Please make sure your seatbelt is securely fastened. Thank you. Taxi! Hello? Ah! Ah! I said don't come near me. No, Minette, don't! <gasps> Stay back, you hear me? Stay back! Bonjour, vous êtes... I mean, are you Nancy? Uh, yeah? I'm Heather McKay. Welcome! I'm so glad you're here. How was your flight? Uh, fine. Well, actually, they lost my suitcase, so I don't have any clothes or my cell phone. What's going on in there? Is someone hurt? That's just Minette throwing one of her tantrums. Don't worry. She'll stop screaming right now. <laughs> they lost your suitcase? That's terrible! Well, at least you're staying with Jing Jing. She'll have tons of clothes you can borrow. Is she all right? Oh, you mean Minette? Don't worry, she's fine. At least she will be after phase three, which should begin right about now. See, she uses this process that some shrink taught her to manage anger and frustration. First, she vents her rage for 10 seconds, then six seconds of sobs and tears, and finally, at least four seconds of robust laughter, all of which restores her positive flux. Huh? It's all very weird, but it works, and believe me, without it, she would be impossible to work for. With it, she's a mere nightmare to work for. Anyway, ready to get started? You bet. That desk over there will be your workstation. I made a list of all the things that need to get done and put them on your computer. That's a Metro Pass. It'll let you ride the subway all over the city for free. Go ahead and take it. Answering the phone is your job. If you have any questions, just ask. Ask me, that is. Do not bother Manette. She's behind on her spring collection and is in danger of falling way behind on her couture projects. Why is she so far behind? She's been under a lot of stress lately. Heather? Yes? I hear voices. Who are you talking to out there? Nancy Drew. You know, from the States? Well, she's no good to me out there. Send her in. Yes, Manette. As soon as you feel up to it, she's right through that door. What do you mean by couture? 
high fashion dresses and accessories that people have commissioned Manette to create. Needless to say, those people are très riche. In fact, she's designing the dress the First Lady will wear to the World Summit in November. Pretty cool, huh? I'll let you get back to work. Have fun! Doodles sure look familiar. Sunny was here. Sunny June! That's why those doodles look familiar. Sunny June did them. He must have been Minette's last assistant. Wow, that guy gets around. Pick up envelope from J.J. Ling, pick up fabric photos from Peter von Schwesterkrank, deliver photos to John Mitchell, truck Leonard, fix plotter, <laughs> do whatever Manette tells you to do, and do it fast. That's the plotter. It's broken. Fixing it is one of your jobs. Manette's House of Design. Bonjour. My name is Lynn Manrique. I'm with the Modern History Department at UC Kearns in the States, and I'm following up on the letter I sent to Manette about two weeks ago concerning Noisette Tornade. Noisette Tornade? It's that historian person, isn't it? Tell her we're sorry, but Manette is extremely busy and won't be able to get back to her for at least six weeks. I'm sorry, but... I heard. Well, six weeks it is, then. Thank you, anyway. <laughs> Well, there you are. I was just about to call Amy Grunhild and tell her that this internship thing she'd arranged for you was off. It's bad enough, Amy, foisting you on me like this. The day I become financially independent and can tell people like her to buzz off will be the happiest day of my life. Well, you're here, we've met, so get to work. Heather did give you a list of chores, right? Yes, I'm all set. One more thing. See that form over there? The one I've just started to drape? Don't touch it. Don't even go near it. That's the dress I'm designing for the First Lady. Now go. Actually, make me a pot of my special tea first. It was custom blended by my tea therapist, so make sure you follow the directions. When you're done, pour me a cup and leave it on the table. A nice big boost of herbal energy never fails to get my brain cells firing. Let's see. To make Minette her tea, the first thing I should do is read these instructions. Then I should put whichever herbs the instructions say I need into this pot of boiling water. Then when I'm done, I should click on the teapot so I can pour the tea into a cup. If I make a mistake and need to throw out an herb that I chose, or the tea itself, all I have to do is click on the sink. Okay, I think I'm ready. If Manette has had a temper tantrum in the last 14 days, and if she declares that blue is her favorite color on the table... Excuse me, Manette, but what's your favorite color? Red. When asked to pick a number between 1 and 
10. If Manette chooses an odd number on the day the T is to be consumed. Manette, could you please pick a number between 1 and 10? 10. I don't feel like doing this now. I'm going to dump this and try again. That should do it. I finished making your tea. Just leave it there. Lynette, you've really outdone yourself. What happened to your wall? You're not really talking to me while I'm trying to work, are you? <laughs> Sorry. Nancy, come back here. The tea is utterly rude. I can already feel my creativity flowing again, building like a wave on the ocean, surging towards some unseen shore. I have another job for you, a very critical job. See the stuff that I've been studying? That, in essence, is my spring collection. Uh-huh. All those objects have certain things in common which speak to and stimulate the artistic sinews of my subconscious, from which all the designs I need will eventually burst forth. Uh-huh. They're all totally rude, but they're not enough. I need more, Nancy. You need to take the number 7 metro to Pont Neuf, go to the flea market in Square de Vergalant Park, and buy me four more things with qualities identical to the ones each of these possesses. Use this bag. Put everything in there as soon as you buy it. I don't want anyone seeing what you bring me. It could give away my whole collection. Here's some money. I'm just supposed to go out and buy things? Stuff. I want 
Stuff. New stuff that's just like this old stuff, only different. Now just take a good look at my stuff, then go. Go! There's something on the floor here. Looks like someone slipped it under the door. It's for Manette. Go ahead and open it. Make the most of what little time you have left. Soon it will all be over. Oh no, not another one. Manette's gotten other letters like this? Letters, phone calls. They started sometime in April, then they stopped, then they started up again in July. And last month, someone sent Manette dead flowers every day for a week. She locks the letters up in her dodo box over there in order to neutralize them. Should I give this letter to Manette? Just put it in the dodo box. How do you open this thing? You don't. There's a lock on it, but Manette is convinced that if she opens it, all the wickedness in there will escape and wreak havoc. In fact, don't say anything to her about that letter. It'll just upset her, and if she falls any further behind, she'll have to cancel her show next month. And if that happens, she may as well cancel her career. Has this windmill or moulin always been a fashion design studio? No. In fact, until a year or two ago, this little old lady lived here. When she passed away, this place went on the market and Manette snapped it up. See, Manette has this thing about curves. She claimed working in a quasi-round environment like this would make her more productive. And has it? As if. But she has gotten a lot of press out of it. In fact, if there's one thing I've learned from Manette, it's that how a designer behaves is likely to get her just as much attention in the fashion world as what she designs. Why does Manette wear that mask? All I know is that back in March, on the last day of her big fall show, she showed up wearing that mask and she hasn't taken it off since. You didn't know she was going to do that? No, no one did. Not even Dieter. That was her boyfriend at the time. Dieter von Schwesterkronk, the fashion photographer. Who is Dieter von Schwesterkronk? He's this awesome fashion photographer. But listen, as it turns out, I have to run an errand in that area, so I'll pick up those fabric photos. Oh no, that's okay, I'll do it. Finding his studio will help me get more familiar with Paris. In fact, why don't I run your errand too? No, that's all right. It, uh, it can wait. Getting those prints to jean mi is much more important. Why is that? Jean-Michel Trequenard is the fashion editor for Glam Glam magazine. All he really is is a glorified gossip columnist, so it pays to be nice to him. Which, as you'll find out, ain't easy. His office is the Café Kiki on the Rue des Mauvais Garçons in the Marais. Look for the bald guy at the corner table. He'll have a cell phone in one hand and a fork in the other. What's with all the red paint that's splattered on the wall in Manette's studio? I came in one morning last month and there it was. Manette must have had a bad night. And she just happened to have a can of paint in her office? Probably using it for inspiration. Ah, well, I'll see you later. Allez, bye bye. <laughs> The memory of the French fighters. Bonjour. Lequel préférez-vous? Parlez-vous anglais? If you buy, I speak whatever you like. I see you over the Arty Monument with the Cross of Lorraine. You are a tourist? Actually, I have a job here in Paris, but it's only temporary, so I guess I'm kind of a tourist. Tourists are good. I welcome tourists. I am Malika. I sell fine things from around the world. The others who sell here, they sell things which they pry from the muck of their basements. You see something you like? Well... How much are you selling the green rings for? They are green magic rings. They cost 15 euros. Two 
too much. Four euros is more like it. Voila. What else do you like? Guess I'm just not in a buying mood. When you come back, maybe then I have what you like. I'll remember that. Merci. Au revoir. Bonjour, mademoiselle. If you like the bargains, you have come to the right place. What captures the eyes? Well... What's the price of this lava lamp? That lamp is very special. The truck which rises and falls inside it, unlike any I have ever seen. Watching it will entertain you for hours. And I am selling it for only 20 euro. Would you take 15 euros instead? It is yours. See anything else you like? Does this cost very much? The traffic cone is one of my favorites. So colorful and so useful. With it, I myself learn to park my car parallel. And I ask only 10 euro for it. It's just a little cone. One euro. It is yours. See anything else you like? Actually, I don't see anything else. Yeah, new things come and old things go all the time. You must come back. I might just do that. Au revoir. Au revoir, mademoiselle. Bonjour, mademoiselle. Monsieur Marchand, de votre service. Bonjour, monsieur Marchand. American tourist? Sort of. Is that okay? I like Americans. They are smart. I sell good stuff and they can tell. So, what are you going to buy? Well, what's in here? A movie? Oui, it contains an American short film. I am not sure if it is about the beloved beast of burden in Tibet or about someone who talks a lot, but it has won many awards. And the fact that it is in a nice blue canister makes it well worth 84 euro. Would you take 21 euros instead? Vendu. What else tickles the fancy? I really don't want to buy anything right now. By any chance, does uh, Mademoiselle wish to earn some money? Maybe. How? The tourists, uh, they like to buy hand-painted reproductions of famous works of art. But as you can see, it is difficult for me to paint them. But for a young woman such as you, it is easy. You want me to paint the reproductions? You see, the lines are already there. You look at the original painting, you put paint on your brush, you paint between the lines. Voila! A painting which the tourists will gobble up. And I pay you 15 euros for each one you complete. Do you wish to start now? Definitely. But of course, 